Ladakh, the land of lamas and high passes, is a place like no other. Tucked between the Himalayan and Karakoram mountain ranges, Ladakh is endowed with an extraordinary charm. This is a story of a group of adventure enthusiasts who set out to create a difference in the lives of people living in the Himalayas. Meet Paras Lumba. In 2012, Paras decided to make his dream to go to Antarctica come true. He made it as one of the chosen few Indian members to the International Antarctic Expedition, led by Sir Robert Swan, the first person to have walked to both the poles on Earth. The temperature is 3 degrees centigrade here, and uh, we are camping in, in the night. So we've got a couple of plantains, and people are very glad to use this. Paras' experiences in Antarctica stirred him and he came back home motivated, raring to create an impact in the lives of the people living in the remotest corners of India. Taking inspiration from International Antarctic Expedition, Paras invited Sir Robert Swan to Ladakh to show what he had created in this remotest part of India, and what better place than the mighty Himalayas. Paras aptly named his unique impact initiative, Global Himalayan Expedition. I can't believe this, really. Yeah. <laughs> from the Antarctic, from the one desert another. to another one. India is home to most of the population living in the Himalayas, and the impact of climate change is accentuated at these high altitudes. Ladakh harbors some of the most remotest villages in India, which are not easily accessible by road, even today. The communities lack basic life amenities, education and electricity being the biggest challenges. The inaugural edition of GHG in 2013 brought together 20 people from 10 different countries, a diverse group of entrepreneurs, CEOs, academicians, professionals, B-school students and adventure seekers. The objective was to set up an education facility called the Third Pole Education Base that was to be constructed of sustainable renewable building material and powered by 100% solar energy. The goal was to teach them aspects of sustainable development and to provide them access to clean technology solutions, helping develop critical thinking around local and global issues while connecting with the world outside. The annual Global Himalayan Expedition was all set to begin with the participants flying into the beautiful city of Leh from around the world. Their mission was to make renewable energy solutions to some of the remotest corners of the region and provide energy access to villages which were devoid of electricity. Leh is situated at a height of over 11,000 feet above the sea level. But before the participants could take on the arduous task of indulging in the real adventure in store for them, they would need to acclimatize. The expedition is planned in a way to ensure that all participants gradually acclimatize to the high altitude conditions, keeping their physical excursion to a bare minimum. When one reaches the mountains, the body must take its own time to acclimatize, but so must one's mind. Chance by the Lamas is way to awaken the Buddha within us and tap into the deepest level of our existence on this planet. And what better way to settle into the land of the Lamas than to indulge in spirituality? The participants of the Global Himalayan Expedition kick off their expedition by visiting the Mahabodhi School to see firsthand the impact being made by the education base that was built by the efforts of participants during the GHE 2013 edition. Paras, the expedition leader, briefed the participants on the history of the e-base, its unique construction technique, and the impact it has made on over an estimated 1,000 students. The e-base boasts of the first robotics lab ever to be set up in Ladakh. The teachers and the students were excited to demonstrate how they could build a robot that could run entirely on solar energy. The e-base was built to provide experimental learning to the students of remote Himalayan communities. Today, the e-base serves as a platform for students to experiment 
on sustainability-related projects, such as waste management or preserving biodiversity. The education base, or as we call the e-base, was set up in August of 2013. That was uh, developed by Sir Robert Swan, the first man to walk on both poles, the south and the north. The first e-base is actually set up in Antarctica, and Himalayas just being so-called the third pole of the world, it was just apt to name it as third pole e-base. The idea behind eBase is to get the local students of Ladakh and get them together to think about the issues that impact them the most, whether that is the Ladakhi culture or language, whether that is waste management, water management, to have them think those through issues and come up with innovative but clean and green solutions. The third pole eBase has been a significant influence in enabling the students to win the much acclimated national contest called the Design for Change Awards. Since the past two consecutive years, while 2014 brought the Disney Play Lab as a prize, inaugurated by the founder of Mahabodhi School along with GHE advisor Colonel Lumba, 2015 win brought in the Mechatronics Lab, training the students on aspects of basic engineering. Interacting with the students was certainly an amazing experience for all participants. But no visit to eBay's is complete without seeing firsthand the daily lives of these school children. Many of them living in the hostels and understanding their cultural backgrounds. But before the expedition team could say its goodbye, it was time to test some team spirit. Team building is an integral part of the expedition that requires each participant representing different countries to understand and respect each other's culture and backgrounds. Playing soccer at such high altitudes is certainly one such activity that brings the expedition participants closer and builds an unbreakable bond for days to come. A unique experience, but not an easy task, considering the low levels of oxygen, which most participants are not usually accustomed to. But it was the enthusiasm, the camaraderie, and the sportsmanship that kept them all going. No journey to Ladakh is complete without visiting the beautiful Pangong So, and nothing prepares you for its beauty. The participants traveled through dramatic mountain roads and panoramic vistas of the Himalayan ranges to reach the Pangong So. The hilly ride to Pangong presented its own challenges, but they were seen as another opportunity to have some fun by the participants. Stopping en route to take pictures of the spectacular landscapes, the camera does only so much justice to capture the mighty, magnificent Himalayas surrounding the participants. This turquoise blue paradise, situated at a height of over 14,000 feet, is one of the largest saltwater lakes in Asia. Sitting down by the shores of the Bangong Lake, which dramatically transformed its beautiful blues, the participants were seen introspecting and thoughtfully absorbing the surreal beauty they were all surrounded with. Cycling amidst the mountains of Ladakh is the first leg of the tri-adventure activity that the participants experience at GHE. The expedition leaders briefed the participants about the ride and shared the safety instructions. Cycling for over 40 kilometers from Spituk Monastery to Hemis ensured that the participants got acclimatized to the extremes of high altitude conditions and helped build on their stamina. Biking on the dirt trails of Ladakh, surrounded by beautiful landscapes and powered by the will to keep paddling forward, the participants indulged in an experience which cannot be matched in any way. It was a perfect opportunity to prepare themselves physically for the challenging trek they would be encountering the following day. The D-Day. The team gets ready for the five-day hike to the village Shingo. Team leaders brief the expedition participants on the trek route and the various challenges they should be ready to encounter during their 70-kilometer trek through the beautiful Himalayan wilderness. Final gear check done, the bags packed, the horses loaded, and thus began the adventurous trek to lighten up Shingo. The trek would involve camping for three nights in the high valleys, underneath the clear skies and the shooting stars, 
and included crossing a 16,000 foot high mountain pass before the team would eventually reach the village. The day one trek to the first base camp near village Rumbach was tiring and took an exhausting five hours to reach. Each buddy pair pitched its own tents. All camping lights were solar powered and made up of efficient batteries and LED lights, a perfect way to keep a check on the carbon footprint while creating an impact. While the sumptuous dinner got prepared for the night, after a long day of trekking, the expedition members would retire in the cozy tents, surrounded by the snow-clad mountains of Stok Gangri. Today is Independence Day. We are at uh, almost 14,000 feet here, headed to uh, Shingo village. And on this Independence Day, we are going to give electricity to that village. The villagers have never seen electricity in their lives. Day two of the trek started bright and early. After a taxing six hours of gradual climb along the stream, the team found itself within the valley that widened up suddenly and quite dramatically, with snow-capped mountains as its background. Well, the difficult part was actually more in finding out which trek we were going to do. <laughs> because we had to change it a couple of times during this uh, expedition due to simply due to the weather and the, uh, the conditions that we're under and that's just part of this that I mean we don't decide the mountains and the weather does so we just have to adapt the best possible. Culminating the longest trekking day of the expedition the team finally reached the second campsite located at 15,000 feet just under the mighty Kandala Pass. Day 7 is the most uh, difficult day of the expedition. The trek route involved crossing a 5,000 meters pass. Almost 80% of the participants this year have never done trekking before. And for them to cross this pass was a feat in itself. And they did an amazing job. Not only did they do it in the given time, they are all safe and sound and they are on their way to the village Shingo. हमारे मतलब गांव में कुछ लाइक नहीं था सर तो एक साथ मिला जी जी का तो हमारे गांव में लाइट दिया साहब ने फिर उसके बाद में ये जी जी में काम मतलब उसके साथ काम किया बहुत अच्छा लगा सर तो ऐसे गांव मैंने परेश साहब को बोला ऐसा गांव बहुत है जहां हमारे गांव जैसा है बिल्कुल लाइट नहीं है श्री किरोर सिंह का वो दीवा जलाता है उससे धुआँ होता है और आदमी उनको उससे बीमार होता है सर तो इस साल हमको एक अच्छा सा गाँव मिला जहाँ बिल्कुल लाइट नहीं है सर तो वो गाँव का नाम है शिंगो Shingo, cut off from the modern world since centuries, comprised of six residing families that have been dependent on kerosene and firewood to sustain out their daily existence. The team members had to survey the village and come up with an efficient design for setting up the microgrids. The team members were divided into three groups, with each conducting the survey for their marked zone. The wiring plans were laid out, and thus began the job of electrifying a century-old heritage. Each member showed tremendous commitment and effort towards doing an impeccable work of engineering that would light up this village for decades to come. After seven hours of steadfast effort, all the rooms in every house of the village were wired up, LED lights fitted, and power testing was completed. You don't need to save the world. You could basically help one individual, and by helping one individual, uh, you're making change. There's 1.4 million people in India, and if every person really helps one other person, uh, it's just a truly amazing task. And that's why I really challenge and encourage everybody to basically uh, be able to do one thing, just to help somebody. I think the most important thing that one must keep in mind is the effort. As long as I justify my effort in this initiative, and hopefully every other participant in this initiative, that is the most important feeling that I can go back home with. When the main switch for the grid was flicked on for the first time, the village erupted into a spontaneous roar. The celebrations went on through the night with chants praising the Lord. Shingo was finally lit up. Samay aa gaya hai teesre gaon ko roshni dene ka Shingo mein. Shuru ho jao. One, two, two. 
three. Go with the flow, they say. And that's what the team did on their last day of the expedition in Ladakh. The rapid rush of Zanskar River with grade 4 rapids was only matched by the rush of adrenaline in each participant. The team wrapped it down the river until the point where Zanskar meets the Indus River. It was an amazing culmination to the tri-adventure experience. Growing strength by strength every year, mapping the forgotten, inaccessible villages embedded in the mighty and beautiful Himalayan abode, GHE, continues to strive forward in providing clean energy and sustainable infrastructure development to the remote communities and change their world one grid at a time. Ask the Team GHE members. They call it their work, their passion, their belief, but the villagers call them hands of God.